Fire Emblem solo runs usually turn out that the unit you're soloing with ends up with such ridiculous stats that you don't even have to think about the game anymore. So today I attempted to fix that problem by attempting to solo Fire Emblem Engage with a unit with 0% growths, which means when they level up they will not gain any stats. The unit that I will be soloing with will be Vale, who has been averaged down to have the stats of a level 1. Obviously this is going to be kind of tough since I'm going to be stuck with a unit with mostly the same stats across most of the game, so I am employing the help of the DLC stat boosters and only them, so I won't be using any of the DLC emblems or do any of the divine paralogues. Be sure to like and subscribe if this kind of video interests you and let's begin the run. On the prologue things are slightly different as in this mod the liberation is no longer a sword and is actually a dagger, so Vale can actually wield it. Anyway, as usual, I hit Sombron twice, then I send him to the, uh, blue dimension, and he dies to Lodestar Rush. On Chapter 1, we have one objective, Hill Vanda. Since Veil's stats at level 1 are generally speaking better than Elias, this map is pretty free. The only problem I have is having to wait like 10 turns for Vanda to die, then I finish off the remaining Corrupted to finish the map. On Chapter 2, we have a big problem. You see, not only is Vanda back from the dead, but he is joined by two other units that should also be dead. I send Veil into a thicket, and I use my disposable units as bait to make Veil have a slightly easier time. As reward for their services, I give Vanda, Fram, and Clan the sweet release of death. Then I finish off the Archer, leaving only Vale and Lumera alive. And after an attack on enemy phase, I send her to the blue dimension and move on to the second part of the map. Here, Vale's much lower HP than Elias is starting to be a problem, as she will pretty much die if she is hit by two attacks in one turn. To overcome this problem, I need to isolate units, so I can kill them one by one. I started with the archer, then I moved on to the lance fighter, who died to a crit, which saved me from potentially having to take a risk on the next turn. The Axe Fighter alone was not an issue, and I now moved in range to fight Lumara. After attacking on enemy phase, I checked to see if Lodestar Rush would kill, and it would if I backed up for one more turn, then I used Lodestar Rush to send her to a place worse than hell itself, the Blue Dimension. On Chapter 3, we can kill units and they will actually stay dead. To celebrate this, all my units will gather near the bottom right, eagerly awaiting for themselves to die. Meanwhile, Vale uses Lodestar Rush to kill a Lance Fighter, and she equips the Dagger Liberation to fight off the approaching Flyers. This task was easy with some lucky crits, and I now let the enemies to the right kill the non-Vale units. But it turns out that the enemies are very bad, and now the upper units rush down to speed up this process. I decided to use my Meat Shields to help Vale survive, and she deadly finishes off the units that attack into her. Alfred now dies, and only two Sword Fighters and the boss remain. The Sword Fighters were easy, and the boss made for a great unit to finally kill off Vanda. Now Vale just blasts the boss with fire, and she dies to a Lodestar Rush. Chapter 4 is the first hard map, as Vale's stats are starting to fall behind because of her 0% growths. And this map pretty much forces you to fight a large amount of units. In a small consolation, we gain Saline, Chloe, and Louie, who we can kill off. Anyway, I begin this map by sending Vale to fight a Lance Fighter. When they die, I quickly take refuge in the fort to fight off the Axe Cav and the Sword Flyer. After we take them out, I push into this choke point in the north. But here I am faced with a huge problem. There are like a million units on this map. With Vale's terrible defense of just five, she dies. I now tried this map a few more times and kept failing. I really just needed some good luck. And on my 11th attempt, things were actually going my way. I took out the first few units and then the units from the bottom right moved in. Since there were a large group of units coming from the right, I decided to push down. As from there, I can circle around the map, and that should allow me to isolate the boss from the rest of the units. So I unleash the Lodestar Rush to clear her way down, and I then place Saline into a fort to kill her off while stalling the units from the right. Vale now runs into the thickets to the south to help her survive. Now I tried to go right, but Vale just died, so I had to stay in the thickets to fight the northern units. It took some lucky dodges, but now I just needed one lucky dodge, and I would be able to safely fight the boss. Yeah, I uh, didn't get the dodge. Fortunately, I survived in the thickets for one more turn, and now I could run to the right. When I got to the area near the second village, the boss moved in to intercept. And here I've realized that the boss one-shots me, so I had to use the time crystal. Now I moved right slowly to not bait out the boss too soon. When I was near the fort, I knew this was my best bet to fight the boss. I baited him out at range as he did not one-shot Vale with a javelin. Then on the following turn, I placed a Vale next to the boss, and if I dodged this attack, I would be guaranteed to win. And I got the dodge, so now I just backed up for one more turn, and then I could kill the boss to end the chapter. As a reward for that tough chapter, we will receive some DLC stat boosters. Additionally, now we can buy one of every tonic, 
giving us a significant stat boost. So as you might expect, this map is easier than the previous one. To start the map, I rush towards the pillars to the left, and I pretty much just stay there until everything dies. The archers were a little annoying with the avoid boost from the pillars, and the backups could cause me some problems if a lot of them surrounded me at once. Fortunately, with Marv's healing and the additional avoid granted by his rapier, we can hold off until the initial rush of units is over. And unsurprisingly, the next room of units were also easy. I just lured them back to the pillar to easily finish the job. I did a similar strategy for the group of units near the boss, but this time I took out most of them on my way to the pillars, and I mainly just used the pillars to easily fight the boss. With them taken out, we receive another stat booster, and we unlock the ability to change our outfit in the Somnia, which means we can look awesome. With this newfound boost in power, clearly from the outfit, and not from these other things, I moved on to the next map, where our power shows. As Vale decimates her way towards the village with the energy drop, I now watch in mild amusement as the villagers die, then I kill the remaining units extremely easily, and now I go do this fog of war map. Usually in these maps, the fact that we cannot see is a problem, but since Vale is so strong, that isn't really a problem. And the problem is instead the fact that Yunaka dying is a loss condition, so I can't kill her. As for the gameplay, I rush through this part with Vale, and then I just hold out at this part right here, and Vale kills a large group of units. Because I was kind of bored, I decided to haphazardly send in Vale, and I accidentally discovered, like, every other unit on the map. This fortunately wouldn't be a problem, as I'm pretty sure she would literally just kill everything, but I actually forgot that Yunaka is a loss condition, and she forces me to use a rewind. I now do a more cautious play with Vale, and she kills a few more units. So yeah, now I just wait for the boss to appear, who is a formidable opponent with his 6% uh, chance to hit. Yeah, he dies, and in the Somniel we come to a shocking realization that for some reason there are two of them. To express my rage at my inability to kill Yunaka on the previous map, I change Vale's accessory to make her look slightly more angry. On Chapter 7, we are joined by three units and my new personal chef. You see, Ulcris can cook meals that boost speed by four. And since this is a 0% gross run, we need every stat point we can get. So to my disappointment, I can't kill a Fulcrest. Okay, so I now marvel at the incredibly ingenious strategy of clicking end turn and watching Vale just literally kill everyone. Anyway, I engage Hortensia and her group of units kill Citrine, Yunaka and Lapis. With that done, Hortensia dies and that's the map. On Chapter 8, I get punished for killing off all my characters, because despite Ulcris surviving the last map, no one shows up to cook. I theorize that I need like three chefs for them to actually show up to cook. So on Chapter 8, I actually try to keep Amber and Diamant alive, but we actually have another objective, to obtain the secret book dropped by the mage near the bottom left. Initially, I tried to use Selica to quickly advance down, but it turns out that that doesn't work, and I died. I then tried again, this time with Marth, and I quickly made my way down to the mage, and I retrieved the secret book. Vale now moves to bait out Ivy, and she lands a crit to take out a HP bar. But despite this, I'm kind of in a tough situation, because both Amber and Diamond are almost dead, and enemies should seize the point on the next enemy phase. Since Ivy was likely to move first, I attacked her to drop her in range to die to another attack, and prayed she would attack first on enemy phase. I managed to actually kill her, but enemies moved towards Amber and killed him just before I got the kill. And I'm not resetting this map, so we have only got one of the two chefs we need to actually be able to cook. On chapter 9, we can now buy an infinite amount of all tonics, so pretty much on every map from this point onward, Vale will receive plus 5 HP and plus 2 to all other relevant stats. Also, we can now reclass, and the stat boost from reclassing to Thief were spectacular, so I did it. Also, the pass skill will be great later on. On this map, there's a chef we can rescue, but keeping her alive would be a pain, so I decided to just let her die. I now place Vale into a fort, and she one round Zelkov. Then I kill the armor units with a rapier, then I just wait in the fort until the mage with the spirit dust approaches, so I can kill them and take it. Vale now attacks Ivy for 69 damage, and she kills her on the next turn, and we move on to the next map. I now play the Anna Paralogue to obtain another chef, as her and Ulcrest synergize quite nicely together as chefs. Since if you don't know how cooking works, there are three slots to gain picks to choose meal titles. And if you reload your save, it will always be the same slot as long as the dish you are cooking is the same proficiency with your chef. So Anna can cook free speed meals if you get slot one, and Ulcris can cook free speed meals if you get slots two or three. So with them both working as chefs, on pretty much every map, I can easily benefit from free speed meals, giving a plus one speed bonus over just using a speed tonic. Anyway, this map is fairly easy. I just use Sigurd to zoom my way over to the boss. I land a crit to kill her first HP bar. And for the second HP bar, I just had to dodge two attacks and land two of my own. 
With chapter 10 up next, I dress Anna up in suitable attire, and then I inherit holdout that I don't remember using. Okay, so I begin chapter 10 by moving Vale towards the right, so on the following turn I can kill the thief so they don't steal the treasure like the Draco shield. Now I just stay in the pillars right here and wait until Hortensia runs out of uses of Freeze. When she runs out, she attacks Vale with Elfire, and because she doesn't do much damage, I move Vale off the pillar to speed up the process of killing all the units. I now just watch as Vale pretty much just annihilates everything in her path. Anyway, with Gold Mary dead, we receive another stat booster and our Vale continues to get stronger. With this newfound boost in strength, she can easily kill Morian, who is a joke. After that, she gets punched to death by Hyacinth because I underestimated his damage. So I just move out of range of his punches and from there, he was trivial to kill. And I move on to the next map. On chapter 11, I realize that I am stupid, but this is not for a gameplay of reason, as I have not installed this mod correctly, and that has resulted in Vale not receiving the Lucina Ring, and her also being unable to escape the map. So after reading the basic instructions, the mod is now actually working as intended. And the reason why I'm talking about this instead of talking about the chapter, is the chapter is not very hard. And I pretty much just move down with Vale, and she decimates everything that initiates combat into her. When Vale moves down low enough, we gain three units, who I kill off, then I steadily progress towards the escape tile to beat the map. With that map complete, we move on to chapter 12. On this map, Vale can equip the Lin emblem, and for this run, she is by far the best ring to use, as at max bond level, she grants 5 speed and also gives the speed taker skill. This is not only a significant boost in offense, as it will allow Vale to actually double a lot of units in the end of the game, but it is also a significant boost in durability, as with all the speed boosts Lin provides, Vale's avoid will skyrocket by 30 points, and since avoid stacking is the only way Vale will be able to overcome endgame units with her mediocre durability, it makes Lin by far the best emblem to use. Anyway, this is the explaining why Lin is good map, where nothing interesting happens, so uh, Vale kills the units, and we beat the map. On chapter 13, we are still at the part of the game where it is extremely easy, and I just move forward with Vale to sack up Speed Taker, to make her even more powerful. She now visits the village for the Seraph Robe to increase her HP, and then she moves slowly up to the two bosses that can't actually hit her. So the Wolf Knights that come from the left are more of a problem than the bosses, and I easily clear the map. Now I go do the Limb Paralogue, that is actually the first map in a long time that actually requires some level of fault. For this map, we lose Lin, so I had to make do with Ike for the improved durability. I begin the map by baiting out the Rivens with the help of a Ike Engage, then I move into the forest to the left to fight off the units in that direction. With that group dispatched, Bow Knights from below began to approach, so I engage with Ike to let loose a strong Great Aether to help clear them up. Finally, Lin now approaches Vale while I just keep her in the thicket for the extra avoid. As with the extra avoid it grants, Lin will never actually attack leaving her vulnerable to be attacked from a distance. She will still use her engage attack, however, but it deals pathetic damage, so that's not really a problem. What was a problem, however, were the mages. You can actually hit Vale, and they deal very high damage. So I had to get lucky and use the healing from vulnerabilities and elixirs to help survive. Eventually, the mages died, and from there, Lin was easy to finish off. On chapter 14, there is a side objective to kill the two thieves, which you'd think would be hard to achieve in a solo run but it turns out that they are really bad, and I can actually just kill the one on the other side of the map with an Astro Storm. Then Vale steadily pushes up, gradually stacking up Speed Taker until most enemies can't touch her, and she picks up the treasure, which outside of the boots isn't that useful, because gold isn't really a problem in this playthrough. Remember when I said that most enemies can't touch Vale? I was lying, as I actually meant all enemies, including the bosses. So she just gradually chips them down until we win. In the Somnio, I got lucky, and obtained a stat booster, which is pretty good. Nice. Anyway, on chapter 15, we are forced to keep Cedal alive, which is actually a problem because the enemy units are starting to get strong enough that Vale cannot easily fight them without risk of her dying. Also, because Cedal is bad, he will die on like turn 2 if we don't save him, and that is hard to do because we have to also manage handling the lower units as well, because if they catch up to Cedal, he will just die. I tried to use Lin's clones to save him, but there were too many enemies, and I had to reset the map. On my next try, I placed Vale in attack range of the lower group and equipped a regular steel dagger to lower her avoid and I summon Lin's clones to hold off the units on the following turn. This proved to be effective, and this time I successfully rescued Cedal. The next room of enemies were a little annoying to kill because of the Miasma Tile's huge defense boosts, but most of them can't hit fail, so they still weren't really a problem. The next room was equally easy as the previous room, but at this point here, I have to carefully kill these two axe fighters to clear a safe spot for Cedal to stand when the reinforcements appear. To help hold them off, I used some of Lin's clones, and surprisingly, Vale is really strong, and the warriors were actually not that hard to kill, and it just took a few turns to take them out. And now Cedal is safe, and the next two rooms were more of the same, and we move on to chapter 16. On this map, we gain two new units that I have already killed off, 
as well as Seedal that I can finally kill off. For this map, I run in from the top lane and eventually reach the bosses, with Marnie being kind of annoying to beat because she takes like no damage, so I instead chose to kill Movia, which just requires a few lucky crits. I then moved on to Marnie, but the healers just kept healing her, and I realized that this was going to take some time if I didn't go kill the healers. So I did that, and then Marnie was easier to kill, and we move on to the next chapter. In the Somniel, I actually got lucky again and obtained a stat booster, but this time it's a secret book, which is probably one of the worst stat boosters to get, so it doesn't really help much. Okay, so on chapter 17, I immediately send Vale North to fight Briss, who is honestly pretty bad, and him and the surrounding mages make for great sacrifices to increase Vale's avoid with Speed Taker. I now move to engage Marnie and Movia, who are both trivial to kill. So trivial in fact that I actually just ignored them in favour to fight the slightly more powerful bosses to the north. Also I should probably mention that this mod switches Vale and Alir, so she is the boss for this map, and is actually harder than Vale because she has much higher durability. Anyway, I bait her out at 2 range to stop her from using her engage attack, I now realise that the enemy units are actually pretty scary, so I have to run away into the evasive terrain. From there, I use Lin's clones to lure the enemies in, and I swiftly finished off Movia. Then I clear the way towards Alir, and she quickly dies. And this is followed by Hyacinth meeting his demise, leaving only Marnie remaining, who is like the weakest boss on the map, and I just hit her until she dies. On chapter 18, there is a chest in the top left that contains a speed wing, which will give us four more avoid, which is very good. So I push in that direction, and I use Lin's clones as distractions to help stay alive. I managed to intercept the thief before they escaped. Then I had to quickly run up into this space right here, as there are two impassable tiles here. So I can only be hit by two units at a time, and that will help me survive the strong yet still accurate wyverns. From here, all I could really do is pray for some good luck, and I got just that. Also, with some activations of Speed Taker, I achieved high enough speed that one of the units adjacent to Vale could no longer hit her. And they blocked that space, so no unit could attack there, making it easier to survive. When all of the aggressive units have died, I've run over to Linden, who I could just kill, but I decide to recruit him. As you know, he's pretty cool and would make for a great chef. Is what I would say if I was lying. I actually just recruited him so the boss would move, and then I killed him off, and since the boss can't hit Vale, as you would expect, they were a free win. On chapter 19, I have removed Vale's evil eyes to signify the fact that I want to save units now, and I move towards Saphir. Unfortunately, Saphir has come all this way just to die. She now gets a kill to stack up Speed Taker and fights a few units that almost kill her, but with some crits from Peshkats, she managed to kill them. I now run back into this part here, as there, only one unit can attack Vale at a time, and it allows me to have an easy time stacking up Speed Taker to help achieve high enough speed that nothing can hit her. A thing of note is the maximum you can increase a stat by is 20, so with the 5 speed from Vlyn, the 5 speed from Speed Plus 5, then the 10 speed from Speed Taker, we reach this cap. So we don't actually benefit from the additional speed boost from cooking. So in the future, I want to replace Speed Plus 5. When I achieve high enough avoid, I run over to the village and kill the unit with the Draco Shield. Now I move her down and I use Lin's clones to bait out the units. I then try to poison Marnie, but that didn't really go well. So I circled around a map and from here I could kill Movia. I then baited Marnie into this position and with her poison, she will actually take damage and will eventually die. Chapter 20 features a side objective of killing the thieves to receive rewards, with the most important reward for this run being the secret book. I push in that direction and I used Astrostorm to weaken the thief, but the entrapped mage was not making this easy as he keeps teleporting Vale in range to die. The main reason for this is he moved her off the pillar, significantly decreasing her avoid, and with her extremely bad defenses, she can't really survive in this position. To remedy this, I just ran down, so when he entrapped Vale, she would still be on a pillar, and she could kill them in a few turns. I now just engaged with Lin again, and I shot down the thief with an Astro Storm. And with that done, I just had to find Gris, who was near the top right. After finding him again, he teleported to the top of the map. Then with another use of Astro Storm, I caused him to move, and with him next to Vale, I just had to avoid some extremely inaccurate attacks to kill him and move on to the next chapter. I now go do the Makaya Paralogue, or I don't even know the reason, as I recorded this like two months ago, and there's no stat boosters on this map, and the Makaya Emblem isn't that effective in this run. Anyway, killing her is very easy. I just use Astrostorm to make her move, and from the protection tile, she was very easy to kill, much like her in her original game. I follow up the Makaya Paralogue with the Erika Paralogue. It features a Seraph Robe, a useful stat booster, that I will likely need to overcome the hell that is Chapter 22, where they take away the powerful Lin Emblem and force you to use Marth. 
who is significantly worse than her. To obtain a stat booster, I try to go right to kill the thief, but I simply die. And I decided I should probably wait until Veil gets past at level 25 to do this map. So now I do the Leaf Paralogue. If you remember from when I did the Makai Paralogue, I said that I didn't have a reason to do that map. Well, you see, I was doing a thing called Lying, as I actually determined that I needed an A rank in staves to use in Trap, allowing me to catch up to this Lance Fighter and kill him to obtain the Speed Wing. I now just used Rewarp to warp to the other side of the river to trigger Leaf to move, and I also used Canter, so the Sniper attacks Veil instead of using the Ballista to attack her. I then rewalk back to the starting position, and I just stood in the starting area and waited for Leaf and the cavalry reinforcements to approach. Then I focused on killing the paladins who were pretty easy to kill. When they died, I still had to be careful as Leaf could kill me with a engage attack. By running around enough, I got Leaf to attack from here, making it impossible to be attacked from his engage attack. Then it just took me a few more easy turns to kill him, and with that map down, we gain a new useful skill. You see, before I was using speed plus 5 for the 10 extra avoid, but now I get knife precision 5 to gain 15 avoid, increasing avoid by 5, which is a nice upgrade. Now I go do the Sigurd Paralogue that is honestly pretty easy. I begin the map by stacking up Speed Taker to become unhittable, then I hit the mini boss to drop down the bridge to clear a path towards Sigurd. I don't initially kill him, as instead I want to head towards the right to pick up the Hidden Goddess icon to boost Veil's avoid. Then I decided to kill Sigurd, and we move on to the next map. I now decided to do the Erika map again, and yet again, oh, Veil no. dies, so, uh... Now I go do the Ike map, which is one of the first paralogues you unlock, so it should be no surprise that I destroy this map with very little effort. Now I do the Erika map for real this time, and because of my previous failures, the map looks, uh, good. It looks good. Don't worry about it. For this map, I ran Veil right. She then learns pass, making reaching the thief much easier. She continues advancing, this time south, and she blocks a choke point there to kill the thief to obtain the Seraph Robe. Erica now moves up, and because of her high hit, she is the only unit on the map that can actually hit her. Now I bait her all the way around the map until she is right next to the protection tile, but out of range of Veil, so she won't trigger chain attacks. From here, she was easy to kill, and at the end, I moved off the tile to speed things up. Next up, I decided to do the Corrin Paralogue because I thought maybe Pair Up would be useful. Turns out that after beating the game, it didn't do anything. On this map, I send Vale to the right to fight the Halberdiers, but they are actually quite strong. So I ran back into the thickets in the start of the map for the extra avoid, and I managed to get a few stacks of Speed Taker. Now Corrin was moving, and with her Water Dragon Veins, she was decreasing Vale's avoid low enough that she could actually die. So I had to run and slowly fight the enemies surrounding Corrin. When enough enemies were killed, Corinne's AI worked a bit differently, as she stopped using Dragon Veins, and she was pretty easy to kill from there. In the Somniel, my stalling has caused me to be rewarded with a Speed Wing, which is very good, and now I'm finally ready to progress the main story. So I reset it until I cooked a 4 speed meal, by burning RNG with Bond Rings. I inherited a few skills, definitely not forgetting an important one, and I equipped the strongest outfit in the game. Then I begun chapter 21. Unlike the next map, this map wasn't too bad. We just have to safely set up a few stacks of Speed Taker to become unhittable. When I achieve this, I fight Gris with a Spirit Dust that doesn't really do anything since I'm not using magic. To fight Alir, I moved near her, and this was tough considering the Entrap Mage was nearby. And if Vale got entrapped, a uh, Lodestar Rush would kill her. So I weakened the units below them so they would move down to heal with physics. And for some reason, this turns off their AI to use Entrap, allowing me to attack them and kill them. Them. I actually thought killing Alir from here would be easy, but it turns out that they heal more than the amount of damage we deal, at least from the safety of two range. Yeah, so I had to attack at one range, but doing that would cause her to kill Veil due to Lodestar Rush. So I had to run in and use Lin's clones to burn the attack. Then I had a single opportunity to attack with Peshkats, and it had to crit to take out a HP bar. She now regains the ability to use Lodestar Rush, so I have to use Lin's clones again, giving me an opportunity to attack again. Now I just had to regain Emblem Gauge and do this a few times until I scored some crits, and we move on to the next map. So this is the hardest map in the game for this run, because of a few reasons. One, we lose Lin, decreasing our avoid by 26 points, and with how strong some of the units on this map are, it means we will get one shot and not even have a good chance to avoid the attack. Another hard aspect of this map is how the AI works. You see, for some reason, regardless of whether they can hit you, they always try to move adjacent to you, which is bad for two reasons. The first is it means that if a backup unit moves adjacent to Veil, she will likely die to all the chain attacks that one enemy will cause, 
And the second reason is when you combine this with the unlimited amounts of reinforcements, combined with Vale's relatively low attack power, you can realistically get into a situation where you cannot move, even with pass, and since she lacks the ability to kill the units fast enough, you just get softlocked. Okay, now let's actually take on this map. So on my first try, I didn't really know what I was doing, and I tried to obtain the rings as fast as possible, which was the wrong way to approach this map, as Vale is too frail to really survive if I did this. I then tried a few different skill combos, with the consensus being that having the highest avoid made the map the easiest. So I reverted back to using avoid plus 20 and knife precision 5. This time I wanted to obtain the speed wing on the worm to increase Vale's avoid even more, and conveniently it turned out that this location here was great, as the worm couldn't hit her, making no one attack from that space and the tile below her was impassable so she couldn't be attacked from there either. Also a mage that couldn't hit Vale moved in front of her causing even more spaces to be blocked. This allowed her to somewhat safely fight the flyers including the very scary Leaven Sword Griffin who doubled her for significant damage. I used a pure water for additional survival and with some good luck I survived the flyers and eventually I saw an opportunity to escape to the right side. While being chased I had to be careful around the mage knights as they are one of the rare enemies that come equipped with the Tome L Surge, making them never miss. I tried to circle around this part of the map to get some distance between them, but because of just how many units there are, I had to find a safe place to retreat, which ended up being this place here. But I didn't consider the fact that I would get softlocked, and after a few turns of killing, I realized that I was stuck, and I had to reset. On my next good attempt at this map, I got into a similar situation, but this time the problem was I completely forgot to pick up one of the rings, causing the reinforcements to keep piling up, and I just died. Now I realized that I should probably just replay the previous map so I could use Speed Taker, as it would technically grant an extra 5 avoid if I could stack it to its maximum value. My attempt with Speed Taker went well, and instead of just circling around, I decided to go out of my way to kill most of the L Surge Mage Knights to make surviving slightly easier. Now I tried to clog up the units on the left side of the map to buy me some time, so I could move towards the bottom left and pick up the rings there. Now I just had three more rings to collect, and the map would pretty much be over, but the final set of rings were guarded by a few backups, which are very scary, because if I get swarmed by a large amount of units in one turn, they will cause me to die. Fortunately, I found some somewhat safe spaces to stand, allowing me to enter the space between the rings, where only one enemy can fight Vale at a time, making it a good place to kill all of the backups. She now collects the final three rings, causing the reinforcements to stop appearing, allowing me to actually win. I now just ran into this choke point, where I just slowly killed the whole map. This process surprisingly took like a whole hour to do, because Vale deals very poor damage to the Great Knights. Anyway, with the map eventually finished, we were ready to obtain our final significant upgrade by taking on Marth's Paralogue. On this map, only really Marth and the Snipers can hit Vale. So I begin this map by trying to take them out to increase or avoid further with Speed Taker. Overall, this goes well. And I also figured out that the AI on this map is actually pretty bad, as they don't attack you with chain attacks when they cannot hit you, which they usually do at this point in the game. Anyway, I used an Astro Storm to cause Marth to move, then I moved into the lower part of the map, and I used a Lin clone to use up Marth's engage attack. But he actually regains it, so it didn't really help. But a sniper was nearby, and with another use of Lin's clones, I could trap the sniper at one range, blocking Marth from moving, making Vale untouchable, and we kill Marth, increasing his max bond level, allowing us to upgrade Avoid plus 20 to Avoid plus 30, and we can also get the higher levels of Sword Agility, that could be useful later on. Chapter 24 is an ice map where they use map gimmicks to prevent you from moving forward. This is not chapter 24, and it's actually chapter 23, where the most notable part of the map is the excessive spam of Breeze to prevent you from moving forward. This seemed like it could be a problem, but eventually I reached high enough avoid that nothing could attack Vale, so I just had to wait until the Griffins ran out of uses of Breeze. Another notable part about this map is there are actually infinite reinforcements of Griffins with Breeze. But due to them not being able to hit Veil, they don't initially move, allowing her to reach a Mage Knight who drops a Goddess Icon that will increase her avoid by a single point. Veil now engages the two bosses, Zephyr and Gris, with Gris being really easy due to his lower durability, and Zephyr being quite annoying, as the infinitely spawning Bow Knights kept attacking, and the infinitely spawning Griffins kept healing her. Because of this, despite this map being pretty easy, it still took me around about an hour to beat. And after finally killing Zephyr, we advance to the next chapter. Chapter 24 is a timed boss kill map, where they push you back with avalanches. And the problem with that is Vale might be too bad to kill the boss within the time limit. So I had to act fast and scale up her speed so she would double the boss. 
I had a problem reaching the boss because of the sniper on the ballista, but when I moved near him, he stopped attacking with the ballista, making him not that threatening anymore. With Lin's clones, I used up past Fail's engage attack, then I just had to equip Peshkats, hide in the fog, and pray for some crits. Because of the Corrin engraving grunting not that much a void, some of the mages could actually hit Fail but their chances were less than Stella, allowing her to keep up her assault on the boss. It was close, but with enough crits, I managed to kill Vale in the time limit and beat the chapter. I now get lucky again and obtain another stat booster, and we take on chapter 25. For this map, I use the pillars in the start of the map to safely stack up Speed Taker to the point that Vale can no longer be hit. Then I just run up to Lumara, and because of Vale's sheer power, Lumara shoots her laser over here for some reason. I now kill one of the healers adjacent to Lumara to clear a way towards the protection tile, allowing her to equip Peshkat and still not be hit by any units on the map. With a few attacks, Lumara died, and we were almost ready to finish the game. But before we can, I had to say goodbye to the chefs that have served us so diligently across the game. So after enjoying one final meal, I gave my goodbyes, and we begun the final map. On turn 1, Anna and Okras die. They will surely be missed. And Diamond also dies, but he didn't actually cook anything, so I don't really care about him. Also, we have now killed off every character in the game, which is a cause for a celebration. So I called in Lin's clones to join in on the party, and the opposing army joined in too. And we ran around in circles. While doing this, Sumron's goons got, uh tired of the celebrations, so they had to leave the party. And then it was pretty much just him and Vale left and she just kills him. Now we move on to phase two, where Sombron goes big mode. And to win, we just have to stack up Speed Taker again. I got my first stack with an Astro Storm on one of the Eastern Griffins. I got the second stack on another Griffin. Then I got the third on a Mage Knight. And now nothing on the map can hit her, making the rest of the map relatively easy. From here, I just ran around the map, killing three of the Dark Emblems to reduce Sombron's damage reduction. Now I used Lin's clones to bait units away from Sombron, so I could equip the S-Rank Smash Dagger to inflict poison on Sombron. When we have two stacks of poison, Vale can now damage him with a higher avoid dagger, so from here I just had to attack Sombron to win. I expected this process to be tedious, but it turns out that I just needed to mash A to kill him, so I just mindlessly mashed A while he slowly died. I tried to turn on animations for a climactic kill, but Vale refused to crit, and Sombron just dies. And there we go, I have soloed the game with a unit with 0% growths. If you enjoyed, I'd appreciate if you liked the video and subscribed. Bye.